Hey guys, Nick Jess and Darko here, and with Anzac Day fast approaching, we didn't realise how much history we had right here on our doorstep. That's right, so we're here at Fort Scratchley, where Frank Carter, the president of the Historical Society of Fort Scratchley, is going to give us a bit of a tour. We've heard some rumours that there are tunnels going from Fort Scratchley over to Stockton. We're going to ask about those. And also, a lot of people don't know that in 1942, this site actually fired live ammunition in a war. Let's check it out. We've heard rumours in the past that there were tunnels from Fort Scratchley over to Stockton if they needed a quick escape. Is there any truth to that? I had people swear that they've stood in them. <laughs> if they're there, we don't know where they are. Right. And as I like to say to people, they've, deep, they've deepened the harbour twice. So the tunnels would not have been that yeah. deep. No. And uh, so we should have a big water fountain somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Eighth of June, 1942, the Japanese submarine I-21 surfaced out behind Nobby's. Now, just out of interest, the I-21 was one of the subs that took part in the raid on Sydney Harbour. It carried a seaplane. A submarine carried a seaplane? Yeah, had a, the Japanese were very well advanced and it had a waterproof hangar. They'd fold all the, wow. all the wings up. History tells us that 48 hours before the subs, before the mini subs went into New York Sydney Harbour, the seaplane off the I-21 flew two circuits to Sydney Harbour to locate potential targets, and everyone thought it was a friendly and turned the lights on for it. Anyhow, after the attack, a week after the attack, it came up here. Ah. It shelled Newcastle, and another one of the subs shelled Sydney. 